Good day ladies and gents, this is the Ecclesiarch here, back with some more Warp Forge. And today I'm going to be bringing you my first tier list for Warp Forge, and this is going to be about the cards for Necrons. Now I do know that there's a lot of people right now who want to play Necrons, and you might be asking yourself which card should I get, which card should I not get, so that my days of my grind or hours of my grind doesn't go to waste, right? So I'm going to be discussing every single card and why they belong to the set tier which I put them in. Now, please keep in mind that this is my subjective opinion, so if you disagree, you can just write a comment and tell me why. However, without further ado, let us begin. Now, first of all, we're gonna have five tiers, the S, A, B, C, and Trash. S is going to be basically something that is amazing, something that I don't see in a Cron deck existing without, or basically the cards that are just too good. A are also going to be very good cards, cards that you might want to include or might not want to include, but in general, they are all very, very good cards. B tier is going to be cards that are playable, but they are generally subpar com compared to S and A. C is all already going to be cards that are on the weaker side. You may want to include them if you're in a, maybe a beginner deck, maybe you don't have any other options, but in general, it is advised against using these cards. And trash is just cards that are unplayable and you should never, ever, ever use them. Now, just to give you an idea, guys, um, the general how I rate these cards are the following. When a card has a cost, let's say a two cost, right? You are expecting it to have the stats uh, to be either more than the cost or to match the cost, right? Like if you have a two energy one, one, or 1-2, it really needs to have something in terms of abilities to just compensate for the loss of stats. When something has a cost and has more stats than that, let's say a 3 energy 3-4, three, that's already good by stats alone. And then, if it also has abilities and things on top, it's also going to be good. You need to consider one more thing in Warforge, unlike Horus Heresy Legions, the fact that there is melee attack and ranged attack. So some troops might have very high melee attack, but don't and not have like ranged attack at all and that should also be considered when you're discussing trades and all the other stuff now without further ado let's begin the first thing that we have here is command barge and this thing instantly is gonna go into trash tier now the reason for this is this is a card that uh, was for some reason changed a little bit uh, i'm not sure why they actually decided to do that the problem with this card uh, is that it does nothing when you play it. It's a 6 energy, I believe, like 6-6, um, six, six, but with 2 melee attack. And you just drop it. It has no abilities at all. It doesn't do anything at all. It used to have a rally to deal 3 damage, but they removed it. So this card is absolute crap. You never really want to use this card um, in your deck because it doesn't do anything instantly. And it's not a big threat because the melee attack is extremely low. So you really are not going to get any value out of this unit. So you just certainly want to not use this in any of your decks unless like you got some crazy idea, which I cannot think of at this moment. So try to avoid this card as much as you can. The next thing that we have here is Dimensional Breach. And the problem with Dimensional Breach actually is the following. It might seem like a very good card on paper because it drops like three random two energy cost uh, Sotek units. So that seems like it's really, really good. However, in reality, it's not because the two energy units for the Sotek Dynasty are actually pretty bad. Most of them are pretty bad. Uh, pretty bad in the sense that they have very low health. So whenever you play the, uh, this card, it's just going to drop a bunch of low health units. They're just going to get destroyed right off the bat. And even if you use like a Resurrection Orb or something like that, they're not going to have a high threat. The best thing that you could really get uh, with them are the Immortals that have Blast. And even then, it's really not that good. However, it's not as bad as the Barge because, for, for example, if you are a beginner and you don't have a good deck, this is something that you might consider having. Like, I actually used this before I got some normal cards. So I would put this in C tier. I think that this is really not a good card. This is a bait. This is a card that might seem like is really good, but in reality it's not. Because the value that it drops is just trash. So, in general, I would say that try to avoid this card, but if you are having a starter deck, you could certainly use that. Next you have the Canopic Plasma Sight. So this is a flying unit with 1-3. 
Uh, and the ability it has is that it flies, so it can only be targeted by flying units or ranged attack. And whenever you deploy a frenzied unit, it's going to give it uh, bonus to stats. Now, the thing with this thing is that this is also a trashy unit. The main reason for that is that uh, frenzied unit in this units in these games in this game, uh, except with the exception of a couple, are really really bad because frenzy in general is not good because most of the time it's just gonna go face. It's gun the AI is not gonna do favorable trades with that. So the only frenzied units you are kind of playing are the ones that have flank or instant value somehow, some kind of instant value. I'll show you which one those units are in a bit, and. Having this to buff one of the worst units in the game is not doing anything good. So having this thing that kind of helps you make useless units a bit stronger is absolutely useless. So I would suggest against ever using this card. Unfortunately, guys, also the program somehow cut off the stats from these units, but I remember their stats, so it's absolutely fine. Next, we have the Chronomancer. Now, Chronomancer is an interesting one that I'm going to put into B tier. So, you might think that this is like a... This is a very good unit because this is a legendary unit, by the way. This is a unit that has regeneration and the ability is basically to, whenever you deploy a troop, you give it flank. Now, the stats on it are okay. Um, it has like... It doesn't have low health, but it doesn't have high attack either. But the thing with this is, if this was a Tyranid troop, for example, it would be much better because uh, Tyranids can benefit from flank with Venom Throw, for example. Something that when it gets flanks and attacks, just destroys a unit, right? Necrons really don't have any units that really benefit from uh, getting flank. They don't... Uh, they, may, maybe you could have a death mark, for example, that could be good with flanking. So you could do some nice combos, but that's a total of 9 energy right there. So... If you want to wait for 9 energy just to have flank, doesn't really so sound too good, right? You could use this in theory on some frenzied units like the flayed ones, for example. But again, that's a lot of energy. We're talking about like 7 energy here and you're not going to have like something too crazy with it. So I would say it's playable, but it's certainly not like uh, in the top tier. Next, we have the Annihilation Command, which is another legendary. So give plus 2 and plus 2 to for melee rage attacks to all your units. That includes your Warlord. Now, this is a pretty interesting card right here. This could be even good if you just have two units on the board because uh, that's already like a total of four bonus damage. And when if you play like some Swarm deck like Scarabs and uh, stuff like that, it can definitely be pretty good. It's a nice finisher. I think that this is better than the Chronomancer for sure. I would put this in A tier. I would include this in my deck, like if I had it. This is not the number one legendary that I would want to have. There are better ones, but I think this is still okay, especially if you're playing something like a Scarab deck, it could be fine. Uh, so in general, it's it's okay. It's an okay card. Next, we got the Death Marks, and Death Marks is all, honestly something I would even place in B or C. Death Marks are also another unit that are a kind of a trap. So, 4 energy, it has 4 health, but it has 5 ranged attack, but very low melee attack, like 2, I believe. Uh, the thing with this is that it has a sniper, so whenever it deals a killing blow, the enemy does not retaliate. So, like a first strike in Horus Heresy Legions. Now, the thing with this is it's very slow. When you drop it on the board, since it's like uh, has very low melee attack, and since it's not a flying unit, so the opponents can easily attack it melee, it doesn't give you a lot of uh, value from the from the get-go. I would put this still in B tier though, because it does have a remnant, so if you cover it with a decent front line, this can become a bit of a menace. It can combo with Chronomancer as well, so it can see some play. It's better than Dimensional Breach for sure, but it's not good enough to go into A tier because it's just too slow. With Disruption Blades, Give plus melee attack to all your troops. The only time I see this being useful is when you have like a Scarab uh, Swarm on the board. Same with uh, Annihilation Command, but Annihilation Command gives uh, to units. This one gives to troops, and that's a plus two, plus two. So I think this is a bit of a waste. I think in general, this will not ramp up your Scarabs enough for them to get into a lethal range. So I, I would say it's a C tier. It can still be useful if you like have board control, you could still do it to deal a ton of damage to your opponents, but it's not reliable in general. You're much better off having Annihilation Command, which is still good even if you have like two or three units on the board. 
and disruption blazes cannot provide that so i would certainly say that this is uh this is not a good thing next we have the first counter attack or defensive ability which is the divination of men here uh this is a an s tier um counter attack for sure this is one of the best ones in the game so zero energy your next stratagem costs two less like imagine you drop a plasmancer that deals three damage to a random enemy whenever you cast a you use a stratagem you use this it deals three damage then it makes a, another um tactic cheaper stratagem cheaper and you use it and throws it again so this can be used in a great way to trigger artifice of your units twice and a lot of good necron units have artifice and i would say this is like a this is like one of the best counter attacks that you surely need to uh consider having in your deck this would probably be my number one choice for most necron decks so certainly worthwhile then we have doom Sight. so doom Sight is five energy flying two with uh two melee attack and five range attack and five uh health this is really really good this is really good because uh, this thing right here is a flank unit. Flank units in, in Warforge is usually very, very good. These are very good because they instantly grant you value. Plus, it's a flying and a ranged attack unit, so it can help you trade a lot. This is like way above Annihilation Command in terms of being useful. I wouldn't put it in S tier because I think maybe you could get away with not having this in your deck, but... Um, I, I always still try to include it. I just think that it's not as crazy as the Divination of many here, but it's definitely one of the best cards that Necrons have. You need to grab this as soon as possible. This is like a rare card. So with rare wild cards, you can certainly just get this. Uh, this is worthwhile. This is a very, very good unit that you need to consider having like no matter what. Next, we have the Earthquake. Now, Earthquake is a interesting thing. So at the end of each turn, you stun a random troop. This, of course, can stun your troops as well. Honestly speaking, this does not penalize the Necrons as some other factions because most of the Necron troops that are good, they're not used for just attacking face anyway. Most of them have Artifice, most of them are tanky, so you are not using your units to attack um, in, any, in, uh, in any way. In most, in, not in any way, sorry, anyways. Like, and... In some cases, this could be really good to just drag on the game towards the late game. And especially if you're playing Emotech, you could actually end up uh, just, I don't know, stalling the game and not dropping any units, just using your uh, Lord of the Storm. And this could buy you a whole lot of turns. I think that this is either going to end up being pretty damn overpowered um, when the meta settles or, you know, when people actually get a hang of the game or it might be like mid i don't see this as being trash or maybe it could have a potential to be as i don't know i would say it still needs more testing but with the sheer amount of chaos that this thing can cost i would put it in a tier for sure this is like something that can be very annoying and i when i think about it uh, i think that this might break the game however it is still terrible because the earthquake animation and the shaking of the screen is oh my god absolutely annoying i don't know whose idea that was at least remove the shake because it's gonna hurt people's eyes now the next uh, i believe this is an offensive capability like an earthquake this is an ethereal energy which is at the end of each player's turn heal one to a random unit they control this i really don't get because why would i want to have something that also benefits my enemy like that sure earthquake can also benefit my enemies but not if i don't play troops but with ethereal energy even though yeah you could have crazy amounts of regeneration on emotech the stormlord i don't think this is pretty good i would say uh, maybe this can help you survive a little bit but i just don't get why you would you want to give your enemy regeneration i'm gonna put this in trash tier actually i might be wrong however disclaimer i might be wrong about this i'm not too sure but for now it seems very trashy to me anyway extermination protocol one energy deal two damage so for one energy you deal two damage this is already a pretty good uh, card honestly the problem with this card is that once i once like i usually have all cards of the necrons like when i unlocked all of them in the closed alpha i didn't use these anymore but right now since i'm missing cards i am using them i would say that this is an a tier card simply because it's a very low cost to 
high profit because like one energy deal to damage plus it triggers artifice so low energy tactics for necrons are in general pretty damn good so i would say this is something that you would want to play and put it in a tier so a good tactic overall next we have the flayed one frenzy means it, ta it attacks automatically remnant and when reanimated gains flank the stats on this thing are four melee attack zero ranged attack and two health yeah it's trash Honestly speaking, never use this. Absolute crap. There's really no point in using this card at all. Uh, it's too slow, and yeah, when you reanimate it, it gains flank, but so what? Why waste your energy and resource on this crappy unit? And the same goes with Ghost Warrior. Absolute trash. Two energy, two, two. So both of these units have a single, uh, the same problem. Why would you want to have a unit that instantly gets taken out by the enemy warlord? Because they have 2 HP, it's not good. It's just too slow, it's easy to remove, and requires a lot of resources to function. You need to reanimate these guys to be useful. For this to gain flank, and for this to gain 2+, plus and 2+. plus. Like, come on, why would you want to do that? So I think that in total, this is, like, not worth it. These are trap units that may seem good, but in general are pretty trashy. Next, we have the Gothar. So, if I remember correctly, it's like a 7 energy 4-8, uh, it flies, and it has a talent to give you reanimation charges, and artifice to deploy a Necron Warrior. This is like, this is between B and C, honestly, it's just that it's better than all the crap that is like in C tier. I would put this at the bottom of uh, B tier, I'll tell you why, it's still very slow, and it just drops Necron Warriors, and... Necron Warriors are really not that much of a good unit. Once again, if you are a beginner and you don't have good cards, you could use this to just maybe control the board in the middle game. But honestly speaking, I think I'm kind of... It just gives more value than these cards. So I'll put it in the bottom of B tier. I don't think I'll put these in C tier. Like uh, I think that B tier is fine with this because it also grants you... Uh, reanimation charges basically so that's that's fine in general however i think that there's a lot more units that are better than this for example the hexmark destroyer which i'm going to put into s tier instantly this is a two energy six um, two melee attack i believe six ranged attack and i believe its hp is either six um, or seven i believe it's six but the main thing here even though it has frenzy it has an artifice to deal one damage to all enemies and if you combo this with another S tier card, which is the Curse of the Pharaon, which is 4 energy, give vulnerable 4 to all enemies, you essentially have a full board wipe at 10 energy. Curse of the Pharaon permanently gives um, vulnerable 4 to all troops, not the Warlord, which means it's like sentencing in Horus Heresy Legions. Every time they receive an instant of sub damage, they take 4 more damage. So it's absolutely busted, absolutely nuts. You can combo this with um, Scythe Assault, you can combo this with Hexmark Destroyer, absolutely crazy, and with Hexmark you can just keep dealing AO AoE damage with the low energy tactics that the Necrons have. Once again, the Divination of Menhir might come in uh, very good use, so I'd certainly suggest using the Curse of the Peyron um, plus Hexmark Destroyer on all your Necron decks. Hyperlogical Strategist, 2 energy, just create a... Staltech Stratagem and put it in your hand. Um, I actually don't know. This is this stuff like this is never really bad. You can maybe get another Tomb World, maybe get a, something like Curse of the Peyron. This could be pretty useful. I would put it in A tier. It seems like a nice thing. Once again, just like with the Extermination Protocol, I don't usually find place to put these guys in. Uh, put this, I mean, put this card in like uh, in the deck. I usually just can't find a place to have it. But if I did, I would certainly include it. Why the hell not? It's a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice unit overall. The next thing that we got is the Goss Immortal and Tesla Immortal. And honestly speaking, guys, it really uh, sucks. But all of the Immortals, I'm just going to put into shit tier because their stats are terrible. Like with Goss Immortal, you have one melee damage and three range damage, I believe, and four HP with regeneration two. It's too slow. It doesn't have um, it doesn't have frontline or vanguard. It doesn't have any cool abilities. It just regenerates. If this was a chaos unit that you could uh, buff 
and abuse that regeneration then sure but necrons really don't have anything to keep buffing this unit to make it stronger so these are just too slow and too bad i would just not uh, put it there it's better than desla immortal duo two energy one three with blast two which is basic cleave maybe i could put this in c tier at least it can regenerate itself okay yeah sure let's put it in c tier because it can regenerate but i still think it's the bottom of the c tier just these immortals and ghost warriors are just a bait i i just wouldn't include them ever so try to stay away from these cards in general next we have the first warlord emotech the stormlord goes into s tier now some of you might think that they it does not does not deserve the s tier um because i think that a lot of people prefer oricon the diviner which i'm also going to put into s tier but let me discuss the whole point oricon has two attack 35 hp and his ability is to basically choose between three cards and then draw the chosen card on the next turn so this is like insane consistency but at the same time Imotech has 40 hp and his ability is also very good two energy deal one damage to a target and heal three that essentially gives Imotech very good survival uh on top of his large hp pool on top of that he can also take out three energy troops not something that a lot of warlords can do in this game and on top of that he can use that to take out remnants and um soul stones so that ability is underrated, so Emotech, I think, certainly also goes into S tier. Uh, I don't know which one is better, honestly. I, I, I don't know. I think it's a debatable, but overall, I would say both of these are S tier worthy. They're really, really, um, they're really good warlords. Both of them are very strong, and kind of shows why Necrons are very good because both of their these warlords are really nice. There's also another warlord we're gonna discuss in a couple of minutes. Next, we have Implacable or Implacable. Conqueror, which basically lowers the cost of all your troops in your deck by two. I'm gonna put this in B tier. Uh, this is not something that is really good because you lose a turn and you lose a turn for in order to just make your troops cheaper. Necrons don't really have that many late game uh, high cost troops that are good, but I would say uh, it's playable. You could play it, you could do some cheesy stuff like monolith and things like that, and it could work. I can certainly see like how someone would um, find use for this card. However, it does not go up into A and S tier because I think that it's still a little too slow for what it gives. Uh, next is the Locust Heavy Destroyer with five uh, energy, and I believe the stats on this are five, uh, six range damage as well as six HP. And when you I, I might be wrong with that, but when you reanimate it, deal three damage to a random enemy. So this is also a B tier unit. I prefer that over the, over the Ghost Arc because it costs five and you can play it pretty early. The Frenzy is still pretty bad, but it does a lot of damage. So even if it goes face on the enemy Warlord, it can deal a lot of damage. The problem with it is that it has very low melee attack of two, so it can still be taken out quite easily with easy trades. But I think that this is something that if you're... Uh, lacking some cards you could certainly put that as a placeholder i used it as a placeholder because I, before i uh, got some good cards so i think it's definitely worth grabbing like uh, if you don't have anything else but i wouldn't put it in c tier because it's better than these this stuff for sure however the lich guard now lich guard deserves a absolute s tier five energy five six zero ranged attack but it has two armor leaves a rem remnant and has vanguard that two armor means that every damage it takes is gets reduced by two, so most things are gonna deal one damage to it, and the remnant, just it, you can just keep bringing this thing back over and over and over again, unless your enemy plays smart and plays around it, which is usually very difficult because this thing is hyper durable. So, I think that Lich Guard definitely deserves S tier, together with Methodical Destruction, because Methodical Destruction is like something you need to have on all your decks. In Warp Forge, hard removal is super useful. Seven energy, destroy a troop and deal two to three damage to uh, the adjacent units on top of being able to destroy it. So I think, and it also triggers artifice. So I think both of these things are S tier and you wanna have this um, in your decks for sure. Then we have the monolith that you probably expect to be S tier, but it's gonna go into B tier. Uh, I'll explain why. It's crazy. 
It has, I believe, 10 uh, energy, 10 damage, and 12 HP with, like, armor 3. It's almost unkillable, and you can play... It gives you Particle Whip, which also deals, I think, a strategy that deals 8 to 10 damage. I don't remember, but the thing, basically, is that, like, this, deal, this is a game-winning card, but it comes out at 10 energy, and by the time you have 10 energy, your opponents are going to have either some kind of hard removal, or they're going to take your Warlord out instantly. This is too costly... To be that useful it's not like for example the ultramarine repulsor tank which instantly deals eight damage to whatever it shoots so this grants no instant value doesn't have um uh doesn't have what it's called vanguard either so i think it's a little bit on the slow side it's certainly better than locust heavy destroyer you could as i said play it with imp placeable conqueror or implacable conqueror whatever it's called and uh it could be okay but definitely doesn't make it to the highest tiers Necro Lord, I would put into A. This is one of the legendary cards of the Sawtech Dynasty that is okay and pretty, uh, not okay, it was pretty good. So, 7 energy, 7 8 is the stat for the Necron Lord. Uh, and it has regeneration, leaves a remnant, and it has the talent Indomitable Will that either you can choose to get a, an Implacable Conqueror, a reanimation. Uh, or what was the third thing that you could get from that? It also gives you some uh, a third ability that I cannot remember. I actually can't remember what it gives as a third uh, third card. Well, in any case, like it lets you choose from mm, it lets you choose from three tactics that you can basically like, ah yeah I remember it gives you annihilation commands yeah it's pretty crazy it's pretty. Um, flexible plus don't forget when it gives you this talent you first use the talent and then you use the other strategy it generated so all of them are going to trigger artifice so certainly a good unit and you can resurrect it with the tomb world as well so absolutely worth grabbing the necron lord if you want a good legendary you got the spider nest which summons three canopic scarabs uh so a lot of people are going to say, oh, it's broken. Scarabs are crazy. You cannot deal with it. Come on, guys. You can deal with it. <laughs> if you know what that is, it is possible to deal with it. The only times when I found myself losing against this build is when I got either extremely unlucky, meaning I had literally nothing in my hand, which is very rare, or I just didn't know that this existed. Usually used by Oricon the Diviner, this card still deserves... Still deserves A tier, probably, because if your opponent cannot deal... But it's cheesy. Oh, sorry about that. Suddenly got the vi antivirus uh, notification. So, the thing with this is that... The thing is... It can become super duper annoying. It's just that it's... I'm still thinking of putting this in the B tier, honestly. But nah, okay, let's keep it at A tier for now because it can be super annoying. And if your opponent fails to deal with that, you can swarm them over and over again with the Scarabs. But it does have a big problem. The big problem with this is that it kind of forces you to build around it because Tomb World becomes absolutely useless because it's going to summon Scarabs now because it's uh, considered as an infantry unit. But it does give you a setup for Annihilation Command as well as the Self-Destruction, which uh, is a Scarab, um, this basically, the Self-Destruction, which I'm going to put into B tier. Because this basically destroys all of your Scarabs and for each one deals 3 damage to a random enemy. If you have a full board of Scarabs and the enemy has nothing, that's going to be 3 times 8 That's going to be like 24 damage on the enemy Warlord. It's pretty sick, uh, but once again, it re needs a setup. Your opponent... Um, your opponent really needs to not know what he's doing or get super unlucky. Though I, I'm, I'm kind of conflicted where to put Spider Nest. Is it an A tier or a B tier? It's not S tier for sure. I guess I'm going to put it into A tier still because right now it's super annoying. So, you know, it's, it's just... I, I hate to admit it, that, but it's pretty good. Next, we have the Awakened Obelisk. The counterattack. This is certainly an S tier counterattack. One extra damage plus triggers artifice for zero energy. Pretty good. Not as good as Divination of Men here, but certainly like a really good thing. If I were to put uh, these uh, in terms of which is like the best and which is the worst in S tier, uh, it would be debatable. Right now, I think we're not going to do that. But in general, this is a very counterattack. Good counterattack. And Resurrection Vault is also a pretty good counterattack. I would still put that in S tier. 
uh, I think is really, really nice uh, overall. Because uh, once again, zero energy re reanimate a friendly troop. Or does this go into A tier actually? Because this does require you to have a remnant. Eh, you know what? Let's put this one into A tier and th let's put this into S tier. Earthquake, let's we'll put way down there. Let's put it up here. Okay, no, nah, that's not. That, that's not how. I, I don't have this placed in terms of which is stronger and which is the weaker, so let's just randomly have it. Okay. Anyways, next we have the next counterattack, which is the Solar Storm. This is trash. Uh, whenever a stratagem is played, there's a 25% chance that a random unit receives one damage. This is like a meme, honestly. If uh, I knew that this was damaging my enemies, then sure, but Solar Pulse is like, once again, a meme. It also might, made might work against you. You can sabotage yourself, especially if this destroys remnants that you have. So this is kind of like a meme. Once again, Solar Storm and Ethereal Energy, I think, are kind of crappy. I think the Resurrection Vault, Earthquake, and Awakened Obelisk, these things are, I think, the top uh, counter offensive and defensive um, strategies. Ophidian Destroyer, 3 energy, 4 4, 1 range attack, Remnant, uh, Frenzy, and Artifice gain stealth. If this unit started from stealth, I would put it into B tier. Now I'm going to put it into C tier. I don't like this legendary, I think it's crappy. <laughs> simply because it always goes face and does nothing else. This is a pretty bad card. This is something that I got like 10 times when it was like the alpha and I was opening packs. And I hate the game for it because this is like one of my most hated units. Don't use it. Don't include it in your deck. I found that this is really not that good. I thought it was okay, but it's just inconsistent. It's just not worth it. So I would say just stay away from this card as much as you can. Resurrection Orb, Legendary 1, 3 energy, resurrect all the remnants. So if you follow up the Tomb World with this, this could certainly be pretty good. I would put it in A tier because this can, like having this one plus the Tomb World can be absolutely crazy because when you drop a Tomb World, your opponent takes it out and then you use this. This can actually kind of save the game for you. I think this is a nice Legendary, it's cheap, it's certainly worth uh, the investment, so I think you could definitely go... Mm. with Resurrection Orb and play that. I don't think that would be any problem. Uh, Plasmancer also goes into A tier. Uh, pretty good overall. I think it's a really nice uh, thingy. I think that the Plasmancer uh, is a 4, uh, four and 6 uh, HP uh, or 7 HP even, I think. I think it even has 7 HP. I don't remember too well, but the thing here is that the ability to deal 3 damage is really good because if you play this, Play Definition of Men here. Play, for example, Emotex ability. That's 6 damage from here plus 1 from Emotex ability. So you can instantly deal 7 damage on the board if you play this guy. So this can be comboed with some stuff very well. This is super strong and I would certainly recommend you guys start using this as soon as you can. Now I think I'm going to move my video camera down to the bottom right because... I think this is going to interfere with you guys seeing uh, what's in the A tier. So let me fix that real quick. Okay, that should be better. Uh, so next is Immortal Pride to give 4 armor to your units this turn. B tier, it's uh, playable. It can help you survive a turn. Actually, honestly speaking, I think it's C tier. <laughs> now the thing is it costs too much. 4 armor is really good. It can also protect your Warlord, but 6 energy... It's a little slow. I would put it above Ophidian Destroyer, but I think it's really not reliable because it just gives you armor. It doesn't give you like invulnerability or something. Your opponent can still deal a ton of damage to you. And uh, essentially, if you play this, you didn't play anything else. So what's going to change? You're just going to survive one more turn and chances are nothing big is going to happen. Maybe it's good if you play this and then play uh, Tomb World, for example. But I still think that this is not uh, worth it. It's a little bit too slow. With Protection Protocol, however, we can put this in A. You can give 3 health and Vanguard to a troop or reanimate remnant. A pretty good uh, tactic overall, stratagem. Usable on most of your decks. I think that this could be nice uh, because it's very flexible. And it's always good to be able to reanimate your units. Same with reanimation protocol. Honestly, you could use that. It's still a pretty good one. One energy and you reanimate remnant. And as I said, low energy tactics or stratagems are just very useful 
for Saltek Dynasty because what they can really do with this is they can trigger the artifices on like stuff like Plasmancers or Psychomancers, which I would put into. I would also put into A tier, honestly, because 4 energy, 4 me uh, 3 melee attack, 4 ranged attack, no, no, 4 melee attack, 3 ranged attack, and 5 HP. And with this thing, uh, once again, stun an enemy troop with the Artifice. Like, this has saved me so many times in my games. This is very, very good. This is something that you could include in most of your decks. And once again, stuff like Reanimation Protocol and other things that cost like 1 energy, even Reconstruction Protocol, for example, these things can be so useful just to trigger those Artifices. These things, like work really well. First, Reconstruction Protocol can be nuts, like drop a Necron Lord, watch the Ultramarine take it out with uh, uh, Zeal, and then on 8 energy do this and play another Necron Lord, so it's really, really funny, usually. And if, and if he takes that out, then from Tomb World you can get two Necron Lords, so absolutely disgusting. <laughs> so I think that um, these Psychomancers and Plasmancers are really good. They're better than the Chronomancer, which is funny because Chrono is the legendary one, but what can you do? Next we got Solar Pulse, Blind All Enemies, 4 Energy. This could see play, I guess, if you use a lot of ranged units. But the problem with this is it costs too much. If it was 3 energy, I would say it could be pretty good. This can help your units trade a lot, especially if you play Triarch Stalker or something like that. But once again, it seems like a kind of a waste. Uh, I don't know. Honestly speaking, I have never used this ever on the Necrons. I'm still going to put this into C tier. Costs too much for what it does. Because what maybe you could do Solar Pulse with Doom Scythe. But like, think about it this way. The Ultramarines have a unit that I think costs 1 energy and blinds the target. And that is way better than this one. Because when something costs low energy and targets 1 target, uh, 1 unit, it can help you like take that unit out without taking any damage in return, right? But with this, uh, it's kind of problematic because what happens there is that uh, you have to waste too much energy. Yeah, I, I think that's too slow and not too worth it. Uh, the reanimator is nice, so it has very low attack values, like, but it has high HP and it has healing and has the t talent to reanimate stuff. So once again, if you don't have good cards, this could be a good um, this could be a good um, replacement for something because it can. It can really be annoying and it can be persistent if your opponent can't take it out. But in any good deck where you already have people have like good cards, this is probably not good. Now, Relentless Advanced Heal 3 to all your units. I think this is like a top of the B tier. Once again, good because it's a low energy tactic, but I think it's better. It's not better than the others. All of the others I prefer over this one. It can still be played, it's like a top of the B tier, you could include one if you want, but I usually prefer to might as well have a hyperlogical strategist than have this and get it from hyperlogical strategists. So I think it's really not that worth it. With Canopex Scarab, which is just a 1-1, one, one, but it has the ability to multiply, it's just a weaker version of Spider Nest. I think individual Scarabs would go to C tier because they're too easy to take care of. And they probably will not be able to multiply. Uh, I would put that into C tier. It's much better to play Spider Nest if you're playing for a Scarab Swarm. With this, the Scarab Swarm actually, which is the 8-8, eight, eight, 6 energy 8-8, eight, eight, regeneration 3, but its melee attack always equals its health. It has zero ranged attack. This is a trashy unit. I would put it into C tier simply because it's better than all the other stuff. It can be annoying because of its regeneration 3, but it's still not that good. I think it's still... Still a trap unit. Just stay away from it um, if you can. Night Scythe, however, is a solid B tier unit. It used to be even better because before the Necron Warrior nerf. So basically, it's a four energy, one four four, four ranged and four health, and it drops a Necron Warrior if you have no other troops. This was a very nice tempo play with two three health Necron um, Warriors with two attack and three health. Now that the Necron Warriors have two health only. Dealing with these has become much easier, so honestly speaking, it's still okay. Good placeholder until you get actual good cards. Next, we got the Scythe Assault. Scythe Assault is really good into A tier, 5 energy, basically defense satellites from 
Horus Heresy Legions deals 2 to 3 damage to all enemies. It was nerfed, it used to be 2 to 4. And with Curse of the Faeron, it can potentially deal 7 damage to the board. The Hexmark Destroyer is better, but let's say you have 9 energy and you really need to um, you really need to get to that uh, 10 energy, but you, you can't afford it. You can just play this combo instead. It's a good board, board clear as well, so overall a pretty good card that you want to have on most of your decks. Same with Scorpec Destroyer, which is, which is basically like a melee, melee version of Doom Scythe. 4 energy, 5, 4, Flank, Frenzied Remnant. Thing with this card is that whenever you resurrect it, it's going to use the flank again. So you can basically attack, uh, sacrifice it, then resurrect it with the reanimation protocol, attack again. So essentially you can deal 10 damage with this troop um, easily. This is a very, very nice one. Uh, same with Tomb Blade, 3 energy, 3-3, three, three, flank remnant once again. So whenever a flank troop has a remnant, it's really good because you can keep bringing it back. And every time you bring it back, it's just going to, you know, it's just going to attack again. So this will only trigger Frenzy at the start of your turn. So when you flank and finish your turn at the start of your next turn, it can trigger. If not, then you know. But you're, this is really not for uh, keeping on your board anyway because it has zero ranged attack and can easily be taken out. This is just to be used as removal. Now, Scorpec Lord, which is uh, Frenzy and Artipis give plus two attack to your units with Frenzy. Surprise, it's trash. <laughs> because once again units with frenzy in most cases are trashy like not that good like for example destroyer flayed one locust heavy destroyer the only two very good ones with that are hexmark and scorepack and they're not made to be used as like you drop it and oh it's attack increases no they're used to, made to use with combos so this unit is just a trap that you just don't want to use with the canopex spider um so this thing Deploys Canopex Scarabs and has regeneration. Huh. Honestly speaking, uh, C tier. Because once again, the stats are not that good. And even if it had very nice stats, the ability to just deploy Scarabs is really not that good, even in Scarab decks. Like, if you're building a Scarab deck, then your main player is still Spider's Nest. So whether or not you really try hard with this... The only good thing about it is regeneration, so there are, it's just not worth it in my opinion. If you have need a 4 energy unit, might as well just get a Scorpec Destroyer instead, or get some lower energy units, like for example you can get a Crypto Thrall, which is a B tier unit, 4 energy 5, 4 Vanguard. Uh, doesn't have a range attack, but has a remnant, so at least it has a Vanguard, right? Just compare it to this. This is just there, and just drop Scarabs, like how many... Uh, tactics like are you gonna use your divination of men here and ability to play two scarabs that would be a waste so i think this unit just does not provide the value it should be providing then is the doom stalker which is basically when an enemy attack deal two to three damage to it this is like an iron havoc squad this is once again c tier little too slow to actually do anything useful costs too much 8 energy. For 8 energy, you can't be playing... Like, you can play Necron Lord for 7 energy. Who the hell needs this for 8, right? So, once again, too slow, not much value out of it. And you're basically getting something when an enemy attacks. I don't know. If it was, like, lower cost and lower stats, it would be better. Like, maybe if it was, like, a 5 cost unit or a 6 cost unit, sure. But 8 is a little too much. The Technomancer is going to go into S tier together with uh, the Triarch Praetorian. Triarch Praetorian is gonna go into top of the A tier. Uh, so let me tell you, this is like, probably like, or actually I would put this into S tier. Yeah, I would put this into S tier. There's no Ray Necron deck without that. Technomancer has two uh, attack and four HP and remnant and resurrects friendly units when you play Artifice, so when you do Artifice, so this is like absolutely crazy. Put this behind Lich Card or Crack Praetorian and just watch your enemies insta-surrender the game. Like, if your opponent cannot deal with this, they pretty much lost because you're going to be bringing your uh, Vanguard units back over and over again. You're essentially making your army immortal. And Triad Praetorian is a very good example of what I said at the beginning of the uh, video. 3 energy, but it has 3 attack. 
We're both ranged in melee and has four health. Already very good stats. Leaves a remnant and has vanguard. So absolutely bloated unit. Does everything you want it to be doing. So certainly is up there with the S tiers. Triarch Stalker, I would put it into B tier. The main thing about this thing is that your other units have um, plus two ranged attack. This is very good for the Scarab um, Swarm deck. Like basically what you can do with this thing is that you can... Um, you can basically play the Spider Nest, then drop Triarch Stalker, and with all your spiders dealing 3 damage and your Warlord also dealing 4 damage, this can get really, really ugly really fast, because this thing is absolutely nuts. So, in that combo, that is. It costs a little too much, so cannot go into A tier, but certainly a playable unit for sure. The Conquering Tyrant, I would put at the top of B tier. I will tell you why. You might find this weird because I'm always using this on my Emotech deck. If you've seen my video like or faced me on the ladder, you know that I always have this. It heals your Warlord for 5 and gives it permanent 2 attack. You can have 2 copies of this. So it's like your Warlord's attack can go up to 6. The only problem with this thing is that it is only good on Emotech. I would not use it on Oricon or Zandrek because... They're just not built to do this. Emotech's survivability just lets him get away with wasting a turn on doing this. So, I would say this is a top of the B tier, but certainly cannot go anywhere else. Uh, Vargard Oberon also goes into B tier. Now you might be surprised. This is a legendary card that has great stats and two armor and any attack against your warlord is done against this instead it's actually really funny when an opponent does not know this and tries to attack your warlord and face bashes into this instead problem with it is that it doesn't have a remnant so you cannot do the tomb world cheese with it just play this make sure it dies and you play it with the tomb world plus the problem with this is it has very low ranged attack of three meaning it can just be targeted with ranged attack so for a nine energy troop those this is not really not that good i just p believe that it's better than like the monolith for example because it at least protects your warlord but it's still vulnerable to um it's still vulnerable to hard removal so uh yeah it's really not that good it's better than all the other crap but still not good Royal Warden is basically the same as uh, the Barge. This is what the Barge used to be, but with the added ability to deal 3 damage as a rally, it could be a B tier unit. It's still better than Locust Heavy Destroyer, that's for sure, because it has a nice rally. So I don't know what they really thought about when they just copied the card and just gave this ability to that. It's literally the same card, this just has an ability and this one doesn't. I really don't know <laughs> what they were thinking. However, you have much better units for the same energy like Spark Destroyer, so, you know, easily replaceable. The Necron uh, Warrior is trash tier, 2 energy, 3 ranged attack, but 2 health. 2 health is not good, guys, it's just not good. When Zandrek summons it for free, sure. In general, no. Next we have the Canopeg Wraith. Uh, the troop ignores enemy units with Vanguard. Yeah, this is like also a trash tier unit. So when you have something like this that has 4 attack but low health, and when you have something like this for the same cost, this is trash. Absolutely useless. Never use it. Tomb World is one of the best tactics in the game for mm, a single reason. It's very consistent. It brings back uh, 8, not 8, sorry, 6 friendly infantry that has died this game. Oricon can basically get it on demand, which is basically one of the reasons why Oricon is so good. And the problem with it is that you can pretty much always calculate with the Necrons what it's bringing back, because you know what units you've played. It's usually going to be like big strong units like Lich Guard and like stuff like that, Necron Lord. So it brings back infantry, so the vehicles will not count. And that's kind of exactly what the problem with Nemesaur Zandrek is. He's going to go into B tier. Um, the most so these two guys are much better than him i would even like argue that he could go into c tier the problem with zandrek i would even actually i would be fair to put this guy into c tier i'll tell you why first off his ability is not good it used to be very good because as i said necron warriors used to have three hp right when these uh necron warriors had three hp it was good because your enemy could not take it out instantly and you would gain insane board control with this basically like uh, you could uh, control the flow of the game very easily with that because summoning a three health troop is very strong now that it has two health it can easily be taken out so his ability is kind of useless and it actually works against him 
uh, rather than being a good thing. Reason for that being, when you spam those Necron Warriors, your Tomb World is going to go to shits. Basically, the problem with that is there is going to be a very high chance of it just summoning Necron Warriors and getting Necron's Warriors from Tomb World. That's basically casting a fancy, uh, a fancy uh, dimensional breach. So I think that it is just not worth it. So let's take a look at the tier list uh, in total. This is basically what we have here. Those are the S tiers. These are the A. These are the B. These are the C. And these are the trash. If I were you, I would focus on getting the S and A tier cards for the Necrons because you can pretty much build a deck by only having uh, cards from that tier. And if you take a look, the, there are only three legendary cards there. And well, four, including the Emotech the Stormlord. But if you play, for example, Oricon the Diviner, you could just get Tomb World and you'll already be okay. Uh, Resurrection Orb and Necron Lord are just there to complement you. Uh, if you have like those extra wild cards or something to get it because with this you could you already have everything you need uh, You're just going to need to get some of those epics like Scythe Assault, Lich Card, Technomancer and Plasmancer But you already start with one Plasmancer and having like even one Plasmancer in the game is already nice So anyways gentlemen uh, that is it for a tier list. Thank you for watching Leave a comment and tell me if you want me to do a tier list for other factions as well Lizzie Ark out. Oh.